After dropping 40,000 Union troops off the roster last stage, I can now take part in the two offensive side battles with a bit more security. Let's start with Mansfield, the one that involves one of my favorite tactics, an absolutely huge ambush. I'm going to rearrange my three cores back to their homogenized arrangements off camera. Before that, I'll purchase the Fayettevilles in the armory for future use. But my cash is becoming a bit strapped, so I need to be exercising some caution there. What do you mean it looks like I got a lot of money? Wait a sec while I fade out. Yep. After refurbishment, I'm back down to a five-figure reserve of cash. And I didn't even refill all of my troops. Only third core has been reinforced to its nominal levels. I'm going to wait for the career point at the end of this stage to put into training before I take care of first and second. I may have to drop into my reserve by selling older weapons sooner than I thought. We'll see. Anyway, I'll be using third core with Trainer General Johnston in charge for this fight. With the massive loss of Union troops following Laurel Hill, I'm back to a position where I feel comfortable using a stage for experience gain, and in a battlefield where, with any luck, half of the enemy troops will barely get a chance to fire back. So, to the stage. A federal force is moving northwest across the state of Louisiana, accompanied by a flotilla on the Red River. It seems that their destination is Shreveport, which they could use as a base for invading Confederate Texas. The Union Army opted to take a shorter road via the town of Mansfield that is far away from the flotilla's gun range. As the Yankees move out of Mansfield and continue their march, you have a good chance of stopping them, defeating them, and canceling their plans. General, the Federal Vanguard has been informed about our... stand? And is taking defensive positions in these woods near Chapman's farm. They will certainly try to hold until the rest of their army arrives. We expect more brigades to arrive, but if we wait too long, the Yankees will have time to deploy their whole army, and then they will greatly outnumber us. You have to attack now. If you crush the vanguard and occupy the woods, it will be easier to fight the Federal Army, defeating it in detail as it arrives on the battlefield. Defeating the Union Army in detail is my plan alright, but not the way they said to do it. The stage starts with you deploying 16 of your brigades, and the rest will show up when there is 2.30 left on the battle timer. The stage intro wants us to use the first 16 brigades to charge into a Union force in the woods with cannon backup over an open field. Wasn't the narrator watching last stage? The big, useful piece of intel this stage is that the Union are fully aware that there is a single objective and that it's right here. All of their infantry and artillery is guarding it, leaving only Union cavalry and skirmishers to be anywhere else. One of said skirmishers should be right in the tree's edge here. I'm going to engage them with my own sniper team. While me fighting them while they are in the woods would be an issue, my large army will be right behind, and once the enemy skirmish team sees the army behind my snipers, they will voluntarily run back towards their main army, which means I get to snipe them in the open a couple times. That should chase them far enough north that my snipers can move to here and my main plan can take effect. So, who wants to see my main plan? Here it is. Behind my skirmish team, I will be bringing 10 infantry and 2 mid-range cannons to follow this path, which should be mostly out of sight of the Union, and therefore take little if any damage from cannon fire. If I get the pathing just right, I should avoid scraping the tree line, allowing my infantry to move at top speed for most of the trip, not needing to waste stamina on sprinting. The other three deploy spots I'll fill with my cavalry. Yes, really. They will be in the top corner of the deploy box, and their job will be to stack on top of each other and run the map's north edge. Their goal is to let any enemy skirmishers or cavalry see them, 
but decide that three units is too strong to engage, resulting in them running back to either their main force or towards the map's southeast. When my remaining army arrives, which will be two scrub teams, the three long-range batteries and the three close-range batteries, they will assume that my main force is doing well and proceed to march to about here. They don't want to be spotted themselves if they can help it, but they will try to detach skirmishers to try and get targets spotted for the cannons to shoot at. On this corner of the map, the only thing you should run into is two cavalry units around here, although other units may be present if the northern cavalry sweep has pushed them southwards. The plan is for the sniper team, the two cannons, and one infantry to cover them, taking up positions here as part of an encirclement of the main objective, while the cavalry proceeds to head south along the map's eastern border. If all works out, the cavalry in the woods will run from the approaching force to the open field bottom right of the map, where our cavalry can then eliminate them with a melee charge. As that is happening, all of my other infantry will be fanning out to cover the right edge of the map for what may be my largest ambush yet. Of the ten brigades that aren't covering the southeast woods, I will distribute them as such to welcome the approaching Union reinforcements, half of which will show up at about 2.04 left on the battle timer, and the other half roughly 30 game minutes later. If the positioning is good, I am going to hit them with such a huge alpha volley of fire that they will start to panic before getting even their first shot off. Once the second batch of Union reinforcements shows, there's a decent chance they will try and panic push through the ambush, and I'm going to let them by swinging this infantry team around north and giving them a path to run to the top right corner, which is where I'll finally bring the hammer down with about three infantry teams and the three cavalry squads. Afterwards, I'll start swinging all the infantry around, so that the main push towards the objective happens from the woods. I mean, as long as they get heavy cover, I may as well too, right? The stage hard ends at 2200, so that is how long I have to get the point.
Well, I was hoping to get both cavalry trapped, but I guess trapping one and hammering the other, as long as it doesn't backdoor my ambush, it'll do. I'm going to misplace the bottom infantry just slightly, resulting in an immediate melee rather than a surround, but it doesn't ruin my plan any. Everyone watching can see the exact entry points of the Union if you want to arrange yourself just that little bit better.
I want my melee team to be part of the elimination charge, but they're pretty exhausted. So I'll give them a bit to rest while the other teams keep firing. Alright, time to do this. You know, I don't remember the Union actually charging my spotter like this in previous attempts. Puts them in the open for my massive cannon force though. As long as I keep my skirmish spotters rotated, I think I'm cool with this exchange.
This may sound a bit premature, but with the entire reinforcement wave having been eliminated, the rest of this stage is me pushing slowly through the woods. Well, most of the rest of the stage. Let's get to a bit farther ahead with everyone's favorite tool for accelerating the slow parts. Start that big squeeze. An enemy cavalry broke through, but is in bad shape. I'll dispatch the sniper team to give chase. I'll also turn off the fast forward now, as the stage's end is fast approaching. In previous stages, I would draw the stage out as long as possible, softening the enemy up before moving in to end it. 
but sometimes I'd wait too long and run out of time, letting many Union troops escape a battle despite being surrounded. I think this time, with the Union pushing out of the woods south, I'll just give the mass charge now. If a couple thousand Union troops manage to panic push through the fight, I'll just chase them at a walking speed, but I'm fine with that possibility. Alright, their skirmishers surrendered, as well as, uh, wow, both of those, okay, and the 83rd Ohio. Got the supplies, 19th Kentucky, 96th Ohio, holy cow, a lot of Union troops just waved the white flag. That just leaves the cavalry in the bottom right and two infantry teams barely moving away to the northeast. That went rather well. Okay, this is just silly. I actually lost less than 10% of my army, and that last charge captured twice as many prisoners as I lost total troops. As usual, my cavalry ate it a bit hard, but this is probably the best result I've had in dozens of stages. Behold, the power of ambush. 312 Sniper took a semi-costly hit, as did the three cavalry units, but that should easily be made up for with the post-stage cash influx. Oh, A.P. Hill got his third star. Nothing terribly impressive on the captured weapon screen. Add that final training point. And save. Not as many third core promotions as I'd hoped, but I'll be fine. Another side mission up next, with another revisit to a past battlefield. Or at least within view range of it. See you there.